Every game will have cheaters. That will always be true as long as there are ways for people to gain an unfair advantage over others. And Minecraft, a multi-platform game developed by Marcus Person, better known as Notch, is no exception to this rule. Be it small things like a tiny little speed boost or the ability to jump up two blocks to highly advanced bots that are able to do your bidding for you. Let's get into the history of how people use Minecraft hack clients. In the early days of Minecraft, when it still looked like one person was developing it, Minecraft hack clients were really primitive. At most, what they could do is modify what you had in your inventory in survival, or maybe make you go a bit faster. Comparing them to the hack clients we have now, they still had a long way to go. Due to this, people just really didn't use the hack clients because there wasn't really a benefit to doing so. And as you can see from this video 10 years ago, the most you can really do is go really fast, there's not really much. The server's already in creative mode and some of the builds are kind of questionable. <laughs> and here's another video from about the same time period, and as you can see, it's slightly better than the other one. It has some cool features like invisibility, oxygen, fireproof, fly mode, and hover mode. You can also change the time of day, and I'm guessing you can teleport around? And I'd say the biggest feature here is actually the ability to spawn items into your inventory because creative mode at the time didn't exist. So at the time, the select few who used hack clients mostly used it as a substitution for creative mode because at the time, there was no creative mode. And maybe some people noticed that you could use these on servers and I'm fairly certain you could because at the time, all the code was basically run on your own computer instead of server side like it is today. Around 2011, nothing really happened honestly. The only thing I could find was one video, but this one video was enough to show just how much hat clients have grown. In the video it's shown that you can give yourself enchantments, potion effects, magnitudes higher than what the vanilla game allows you to get, free experience, and food. Sadly in the video though, the only thing that actually worked was the experience and potion abilities as when he took damage his hunger went all the way back down and he just couldn't bring the little sword into the enchanting box. Still, for something that's 9 years old this is absolutely crazy. So for 2010 to 2011 nothing really happened, except the person in the video does mention griefing at one point, so I can expect that some griefing was going around at this time period. Still nothing that crazy though. 2012, the first big client has been released by the name of Notice. Notice was really a piece of software, because for 2012 it was like none other, having cheats that are still commonly used today. At this point, this is where the scene started to change, and when I really start getting into this video. Before this, servers really didn't have an anti-cheat. I mean, what's the point of having an anti-cheat if there's, you know, no cheaters? But thanks to Notice, this changed. And this is when servers started realizing just how bad it could get. Because if you give two kids a little hack client and they go ham at your server, they could ruin it for everyone else. So to stop griefing and the like, servers started implementing an anti-cheat, going by the name of NoCheat. NoCheat was the first widely spread anti-cheat. And if your server was having a griefing problem with hackers, then all you had to do is slap this bad boy on and boom, your problem mostly solved. And getting that out of the way, this is when everything starts to actually change. Now you see, 2012 is a big year for griefing. From notice coming out, and just the IRC chat alone, griefers now had an easy way to communicate with each other. You can even see here that people are spamming in the IRC chat about griefing groups. And if you don't know what an IRC chat is, it's a chat used by only the people who use the hacked client. And even the hacked clients of today still use this, though I recommend you turn it off if you want to use hacks. And my first point, griefing. That's how everyone used hack clients way back when other than replacing it for creative mode for about one year, that was about it. 
Nothing much happened for the first two years. A new era. A new chapter. This is when it all starts changing. The main focus of Minecraft hack clients will most likely always be about griefing. But here's where it takes a little stroll to the left. When people install a Minecraft hack client, they usually are looking for something to give them an edge on the competition. But for anarchy servers in Minecraft, the ones with no rules, they are actually installed to even out the playing field. There's only one anarchy server I'll talk about, and it goes by the name of 2B2T. You've probably heard of it, as it's the most popular anarchy server in Minecraft. It's also one of the oldest servers in existence, and has a map as old as the game itself. If you wanted to join this server today, other than the queue times, you'll probably hear the most about how you need a hack client to play on the server itself. Now this hack client thing is actually false. If you want to play on the server in full vanilla, go straight ahead. There is absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. Except, cheats just make it that much easier, to the point where almost everyone on the server cheats. For people on 2B2T, cheats are almost a way of life to them. And this, this is the second way people can use hack clients in Minecraft. Not for griefing, but for enjoyment and a new way to play Minecraft as it is. December 5th, 2018. Popular YouTuber Sal C1 was about to upload one of his most popular videos yet, named Minecraft Duping, Skittle MC. The premise of the video is that Skittle MC, a huge pay to win server that had an exploit that allowed Sal C1 to dupe items very quickly. He ended up crippling the economy pretty bad, but it was not permanent as they just banned his account with all the money and unfortunately Skittle MC is still going on today and they're just as pay to win as they were before. But Sal C1 was not done yet. Be it from the success of his first video or just disliking pay to win servers, he made a second one named Minecraft Duping Earth MC. This time he duped a bunch of gold blocks and ended up crippling the economy so hard they actually had to shut the entire server down. After this, Sal C1 would start to make some live streams where he would get a bunch of his fans to join a server and then crash it with the sheer amount of lag that they all caused. These methods though were non-permanent as the server only experienced some lag and crashed at the worst, unlike what he did to EarthMC when they had to reset the entire server. And this is where his last video of note comes in where he duped on his server called TreeMC, this time making two videos on it and completely shutting it down. This time, it was more permanent though, as today, the server barely hits over 100 people, barely half of what they had prior to this. Like a catalyst, Sal C1 brewed up two of the most furious potions I've ever seen in my life. On YouTube, they go by the name of The Horizon and Time Am, both equally big and both equally dangerous to the community of pay-to-win servers. For the purposes of this video, I actually messaged them both, asking if they were influenced by Sal C1 to crash servers. And unsurprisingly, they both were. This confirmed my theory, but I actually got an untold story from Time Am, so I kinda just wanted to go through that real quick. So for Time Am, Sal C1 influenced him, but it wasn't the main reason. The main reason was actually because his close friend was getting spammed by Discord bots advertising their shitty pay to win servers, and the rest kinda just became history. Now that that's out of the way, when you take a look at their channels, it may look like the Horizon is the only one uploading content regularly. So to some it may seem that the Horizon is the only one actively crashing servers because of this. Whether or not Time Am is doing the same thing in his off time, I can't say. But what I can say is that their channels are very similar, and similar things tend to gravitate towards each other. Let's talk about how they shut down servers. Now, they both have different primary methods for shutting down servers. For the Time Am group, they seem to absolutely love using lag machines. And for Horizon, they seem to love duping items to completely crash the economy. Both these methods are incredibly effective. When the economy is completely broken like what the Horizon likes to do, what it requires to fix is a complete reset of the server, so it's incredibly effective. Now let's talk about Time Am's way to lag a server. Some of you might remember when I talked about how lagging the server isn't really effective. The difference is, they brute forced it with a lot of people, and the Time Am group uses insanely large redstone machines. What this does is that the server owners have to almost completely disable redstone so they don't lag the server again. And redstone is a big feature in Minecraft which will cause a lot of people to leave the server, which makes this an extremely effective method to shut down pay to win servers. But the thing that the Horizon and Time Am have in common is that they both use hacked clients. 
Here's what I was building up to, my third point. People are starting to use hack clients, the ones designed for griefing, to better the game by removing garbage pay to win servers from Minecraft. While one uses it to exploit the game, and the other one uses it to mine blocks for him. They both make the game better as a whole. From griefing servers in 2012, to some people using hack clients as a new way to play the game and enjoy Minecraft as a whole, to people shutting down disgusting servers with the help of hack clients. This has been a complete history on the use of hack clients. Subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time.